Welcome back. In this lecture, we will describe how to train a neural network. And so by the end of this lecture, you should be able to do just that. So the first concept we'll talk about is forward propagation. And that is where, in a given iteration of, say, gradient descent that we will also use to train a neural network, we will already know the weights because we would have had them. And we want to just say for the input data coming from the training data, these x1, 2, and 3 in this example, simply they will just propagate forward through the neural network. And at each neuron, we will, you know, at each neuron, we will compute the output based on the activation function and the linear combination of inputs and weights. And we just do that iteratively until we get these outputs, these y hat variables here. Now, what we will be doing once we have that output, these will be compared to ground truth. And we will use a loss function to measure the difference between the output, those y hat variables, and the ground truth. And based on that loss function and uh, the derivative of it, we will compute uh, partial derivatives uh, for with respect to each weight. But we will do that in an iterative way going back through the entire network. And that's the back propagation step. And we will do that step by step. And the reason for doing that is if you would try to take the um, partial derivatives of the entire neural network, it would be very difficult because you could think of the entire neural network as one big uh, function. And that function is composed of all the different activations. And the way those functions are composed are based on the architecture of the network. This would be very difficult to just sit down and just uh, write all that out. Either a human would have to do that at the time of designing the architecture, which would be a lot of manual work and prone to error, or you'd have to have some kind of um, you know, theorem-proving software that would do that automatically. However, as we'll see in a little bit later in this lecture, uh, there's a nice trick available in calculus called the chain rule that lets us calculate the gradient in this iterative manner. And that's why we have this part here, this back propagation piece that we will discuss in detail. So um, let's kind of look back at what we're uh, aiming for here. We have a bunch of samples, historical data, x1 through xn. And we have this ground truth vector y, where each um, component of the y vector is a ground truth result of what it should be for each of the xi samples. So um, component yi of vector y is the ground truth associated with vector uh, xi. And so we want to find w, this set of weights, such that this uh, loss function is minimized. And in this case, um, we'll look at this uh, sum of uh, squares. It's not that big of a deal. Um, one just quick technical note here, there might be cases where you have a neural network that has, say, k different output neurons, maybe going along with k different classes. In this case, we make a slight adjustment where we look at a linear combination of the outputs and add in another summation there. But you're just, you know, summing a bunch of differentiable functions, so this um, doesn't make any difference to the math. Throughout this lecture, we'll generally assume there's just one output to keep things simple, but please keep that in mind. So here's our strategy. So um, like I mentioned at the beginning, imagine that the neural network is one big function. And we have these set of samples that I showed on the last slide, and of course the ground truth. And we just want to find a set of weights to minimize that loss function. 
So if you recall from earlier lectures, the great way to do this uh, is gradient descent. And you might already be thinking that, hey, you know, I, I know that that loss function is differentiable. I know that all those activation functions, you want them to be differentiable. So this seems like something that uh, should be doable using gradient descent, and it is. So, you know, at each iteration of the gradient descent, we can adjust the weights by uh, the gradient of the loss function. So, okay, well, the neural network is one big function, and you want to find the derivative of this giant function. And like I mentioned before, the function consists of a bunch of these activation functions composed within each other. And that level of composition gets greater and greater as you go uh, down the different layers. So we need a little theorem to help us deal with composed functions. So the chain rule, that's very handy. And we know that the derivative of f of g of x equals f prime g of x multiplied by g prime of x. And this example with the logistic function runs you through a quick exercise of how to do that. And so, okay, great, we have this. And like I said, if you really wanted to for a given neural network, you could take the chain rule and you can write out all those derivatives by hand and code them into Python or what have you and go to town. But the idea with backpropagation is you don't want to have to do that. You want to be able to just go into software like TensorFlow and say, I want to just throw on another layer of neurons. And I don't want to have to think about you know, what the derivative is for, you know, or how that uh, derivative changes. I just want to add that in there and see if that improves performance. Or maybe I want to change what my loss function is. Or I want to go from regression to classification. You want this flexibility, and the flexibility enabled by backpropagation uh, really is what gives us a lot of the widespread use of neural networks today. So, okay, like I keep saying that the brute force calculation of the partial derivatives just would be really challenging. And so, uh, you know, doing all those gradients at the inner layers would be very tedious. And as I just said, you know, more flexible if you can avoid that. But the chain rule tells us a bit more. If you look at it restated in this way, we can see that a key thing is if we need to find dy dx, and maybe we know du dx from a previous iteration of uh, the algorithm, we might be able to compute this other thing called a local gradient, du dy, if we can do all that, then we have everything we need to find that partial derivative. So backpropagation, um, we will uh, give a specific example um, about the relationship between uh, two neurons. So we're going to pick these two here. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of notation, so we're going to just kind of go through that now. Uh, we'll, have, um, we'll have neuron I and neuron J. Now the thing is, is backpropagation, remember we're starting with the output layer and we're going uh, back toward the input layer. So we we'll actually will start with J and use information from neuron J to figure out, uh, you know, the gradient for neuron I. And then so the input for neuron I, we'll just say that's in I. This is the, um, uh, the output, we'll say, is AI. The input for uh, neuron J is NJ. And the output for neuron J is AJ. And we also will have uh, the weights. And so we'll talk about weights um, between uh, neuron J and the neurons that are a layer above it as WJK. And then WIJ will refer to weights between neurons I and J. So, okay. So we want to find the partial derivative um, 
uh, uh, with respect to the loss function for w i j. So what do we do? Well, I'm not going to walk you through the entire derivation, but I'm going to provide you with the intuitions and show you how this works in an iterative fashion in backpropagation. So we have this quantity called the output sensitivity, delta k. And we want to, we have that from the higher layer, and we want to use it to compute this output sensitivity, delta j, which we solve by the formula uh, g prime of in j, so the input to node j, multiplied by the sum of the weights, the weights going out of node j, uh, and the input sensitivity. So you can already see here this has got a bit of the feel of uh, the partial uh, or the chain rule as we saw in the last slide. And so the, because right here, this first component, this first factor, is simply just the derivative of the activation function with uh, that input as the argument. And so the, re the second factor we can think of as the portion of error from the last layer that is apportioned to node j. And so note that we're summing over um, WJK. There's a lot of other connections that go into the next layer beyond J, so we say that's some layer over here, K, but the only those weights that start with a J are being attributed to this guy right here. And so this is a weighted, so you could think of this delta K as the error, and so we're only weighting over, or only summing over the weights that are emanating from node J. And so now you can compute the partial derivative with respect to weight IJ as simply uh, negative AI, the activation uh, result from node I, multiplied by the output sensitivity delta J. And since you have now uh, uh, delta J, you can use this at the layers below to calculate those output sensitivities and those gradients and do that over and over. And that's what backpropagation is doing. One quick note, uh, if K is an output node, the output sensitivity is uh, computed based directly on the loss. Um, just a, a technical note because it's the last layer. Well, now that we have this algorithm, back propagation, which allows us to compute the gradient, we can then use gradient descent. And we can use gradient descent just as it is, knowing that hey, the gradient is going to be computed using this little backpropagation trick, and uh, this works in the normal way. So that concludes our lecture on training of neural networks. Stay tuned for more content.